A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. reading 
from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on, he, on our behalf. Now that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the fountain, foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the edge of the ages to take away the sins by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human being die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ. Offer once to take away the sins of many will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, on our coins and paper money, we have uh, the words, these words inscribed on them. In God, we trust. I was thinking, can we honestly say that? In God, I trust. Do we really trust God with our lives? What about our money? Do we trust God with our money? Consider the widow in today's gospel. I wonder what led her to give so generously. 
Was she familiar with the widow in today's first reading that also gave all she had and received from God a bountiful reward? There's a story of a village where a missionary came and talked about tithing. Tithing means giving 10% to God. Afterwards, a little boy went fishing. When he returned, he came and knocked at the door of the missionary and said, here's my fish. The missionary asked, where are the other nine? The boy said, oh, they're still in the river. I haven't caught them yet. The little boy gave his first fish. What a wonderful story about trust. He trusted that God would provide and give him other fishes. Can we do the same? Give God our first and our best and trust that God will provide the rest? When the Israelites offered a lamb for sacrifice, they didn't pick out the blind and the lame one. They didn't ask, oh, which lamb can I do without? Instead, they found the best one they had, the healthiest one-year-old male lamb that was without blemish. That was the one given as a sacrifice to God. Thankfully, these days we don't offer animal or human sacrifices. Nonetheless, we can still make a beautiful offering of ourselves to God. And that's what the church means when she talks about being a good steward, right? Of all the gifts and talents that God has given me, how am I a good steward with this? How do I give back to God and to each other? Do you believe that we can never outgive God? I remember the first semester when I entered the seminary, one weekend, uh, uh, I went out with a few of my classmates as we were driving down this, um, this busy um, shopping area. Um, I, it, it dawned on me, you know, my income had by then as a student dropped down from a comfortable salary down to zero. So as a student, we're driving past all these restaurants and I'm looking at them and I'm saying to myself, Nope, I can't go there anymore. And then we pass another one. Nope, can't do that one either. A student, right? But you know what? We can never outgive God. Even as my income dropped to zero and I had to give up the possibility of having my own wife and children. But God was far more generous than I could ever imagine. Even though I have no children of my own, God has given me so many more children. You know, an example of that, each time I go down to the schoolyard, all these kids, they call me father, father. And even though I don't have my own wife, but God has given me so many good friends. And even though I'm not making the kind of money as I did before, but God has given me so much more meaning and satisfaction in life through this ministry. I feel richly blessed. God has tru truly given me much more than I could ever imagine and hope for. In today's gospel, even though others gave more money than the widow with her two small coins, yet God valued her gift more. Because it's not the size of the gift that matters, but it's the size of the heart, right? And Mother Teresa also taught, it's not what we do that's important, but how much love we put into what we do. May this poor widow in today's gospel intercede for us that we may have a heart like hers and can honestly say, in God, I trust. And as the widow in today's first reading receive an abundance from the Lord, so may we also experience God's abundant blessings in our lives. Amen.
Well, to the Lord who is generous to us, to him let us renew our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to God in prayer, seeking his help and guidance to live and obey his commandments of love for him and for our neighbor. For the church leaders, that they lead us by example to love God and neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all persons suffering from war, may they be held in God's loving care and protection and given the strength to endure great suffering and hardship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our newly elected officials to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership, give to them the vision of truth and justice, that by their counsel all nations and people may work together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all veterans and all who serve our country, especially those still struggling with the effects of war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all veterans, for the sick, we remember Roberta Lai, that they find comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Queen White, Lorraine Gotelli, Edith Bukoy, as well as those who mourn the, la the loss of a loved one, that they may find peace with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Arturo Conti and for the birthday of Mickey Austria. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, in whom we are confident we can take refuge and from whom in your generosity we can draw strength, we ask that you hear our prayers which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The song for the preparation of the gifts is number 408. Number 408.
pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks. He set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your son, Jesus Christ, who's our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, and those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis our Pope and Salvatore our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly command to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The communion song is number 509, number 509. Let us pray. Nourished by the sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. Oh, sorry, there's still announcements. <laughs> well, hold the blessing. <laughs> um, please be seated. <laughs> Our second collection this Sunday is for the property and liability insurance. The good news, with good prevention plans in place and less injuries, last year our premium has come down. Nevertheless, our cost is still over 120000 a year. 
Thank you for your generosity to help us with this big parish expense. Ushers, you may now take up the collection. In preparation for Thanksgiving, we are collecting non-perishable food for those in need. You may drop off your non-perishable food in the vestibule in the next few Sundays. Food collected will go to St. Anthony Dining Room. We thank the Knights of Columbus for assisting with this collection. And our closing song is number 391, number 391. Thanks, Bill. All right, now we can conclude the Mass with a final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ.